Money, money, money. How much money do you gotta spend to get yourself a proper setup DIY bow shop in your own house? We're gonna tell you today how much I spent and show you all the cool things behind my shoulder. Here we go. I've been bow hunting for, man, I'm like year number 22 or something like that. And I'll be honest about majority of those, I couldn't set a bow up to save my life. Finally, I just decided I was gonna learn. I forced MFJJ to teach me. I haven't regretted it since. Now, I still make mistakes that I have to go in and get corrected, but I've evolved so much and my confidence in the field to know if something is wrong has like, I've massively gone up to where I can identify a problem, fix it, and know that my equipment's gonna work for me in the backcountry. That alone, to me, is worth investing in yourself. Let's talk about a boat press, because that's the first thing that I bought. This is a last chance. You can get the easy green, it's super fine. I don't remember this exact one, but it's a little bit more of a step up. Now, one thing I should do is take this off and have Josh show me how to set up the little threads where you can use an impact driver. That would save me some time, but honestly, I'm not doing bow build after bow build, so I don't mind the wheel, but get yourself a, a really good bow press. Last Chance to me seems to be one of the, the top brands out there. This is gonna be one of your biggest purchases. Just rip the Band-Aid off, cry once, buy once. From there, think about setting your bow up from the beginning. The first thing you wanna do is probably set your rest up. So you're gonna need some Allens and you're gonna need to kind of have a bow vise over here. Putting your bow in a bow vise is huge. This is OMP, October Mountain Products, and we have the wide one so that it can suit wider limbs. This is such a good investment because you need a stable platform to kind of stand here and work on your equipment. OMP, by far, um, I sell them on a website because they're awesome, I stand behind them. This is your second investment and it's not cheap. But again, it'll last you a lifetime. And as always, we'll include links in our uh, video description so it can help your search a little faster. All right, so now that we've had this, I didn't talk about the attachment right here. Some last chances come with this. This has been a huge, huge deal for me. Just put your bow in, crank it back, check your time to where both draw stops are hitting at the same time, making sure that everything, because if your bow's not in time, your groups, you're gonna notice right away inconsistencies and it's gonna be frustrating. So make sure your bow is in time. Once you get your rest installed, make sure that you have a good center shot and then you can start to paper tune. Let me show you what we fabricated. Jake Web Fabrications, LLC. Yeah. Is this a little doodad? Yeah. Jake. It's pretty good, handy with the steel, if you know what I mean. So he welded this up for me. So what I basically do is I can hang a morel target here and shoot the bag target. I can take the morel off, butcher paper here, put your butcher paper on, close that down, clip, and then you can shoot through paper, probably five yards away is fine. And then just see which way your arrow is orienting out your bow, what kind of tears you're getting. And then just really maybe get a diagram of knock tears and help kind of diagnose the issue. I really don't like messing, and I've noticed Josh does this as well. He sets that rest 13 16 off the riser, gets that center shot, and then it should be shooting bullets. And if it's not, then if it tears high or low, he's generally just making a quick little adjustment on the elevation of the rest. But if you're getting a left or right tear, then he's doing top hats or you'd be doing some yoke adjustment depending on your bow. That's really the next step is once you get it tuned paper, then you can start slapping other things on. Let's go through some of the tools I have to do all the fun stuff like peeps, D loops, first, second, third axis on your site, all those little nuanced things over here. First things is I have this little doodad that you can put on arrows with a rubber band. You can, I just cut the arrow really short. You can put it on your rest and make sure that the rest is level. And then you can put this on your string level as well. Josh makes these, Josh sells these. And by the way, Josh, when you're watching this, you owe me one of these because this one, the bubble came off, he said he'd get me a new one. And so I just glued it back on, but you put that on your string, you get your level, and then you can check your uh, arrow rest. The other one, oh, Jake was here. I can tell stuff not put back. You can put this on your string as well to get your center shot off your rest. And I have one other tool and it's the one, oh, this is the one I use the most. And this is the one that Josh uses. And you can see it's silver sharpied. Josh sharpied it for me so I knew exactly where to tie in my soft knots so that I can have my D loop 
perfectly shooting square and that arrow coming out perfect. So these are some of the tools. I use this 10 times to this. I think what happened, Tim, is I bought this first and then Josh was like, you don't need that by this. So I have both, but I use that primarily. Did I get center shot? Yes, yeah. pretty important step. Now when you're gonna tie in D loops and all that kind of stuff, so you get your, look at these little bad boys. You got your little holes here. This is super nice to getting that cord your D-loop material, when you're tying in, you can kind of wrap around, yank on it, make sure your D-loop generally is four and a quarter or four and an eighth. Uh, Material-wise, I feel like Josh has really gone more towards BCY D-loop material, so that's what this is. Kind of nice having one of your best buddies own a shot for years, he can kind of point you the right direction. So loop pliers, these are really specific for D-loops, so you can push those in and then you can pry open your D-loop. Really handy tool. I don't use this tool as often, like if you're doing your own custom strings and you're gonna put your own speed knocks on, you can crimp those down. You can also slide over against the string, your soft knots. Again, Phillips, a couple of Phillips. Then we have a third axis leveling tool, two of them. There's a second gen coming out or that is out that I would recommend over this one, but I still use these. And then they have a new tool for 2023 and that'll be a video coming soon. I talked to Hamsky, they're sending us one to do a review on, which is awesome. Thank you, Hamsky. But get yourself this. This is really a tool I, I put on this, the bow site and I make sure that I can get my second axis doped with the string level. Where did I put my string? So you match these two levels up. This is attached to your site. You match that up. You can get your second access, and then you can even leave this on and take these two guys, find yourself a door jam plumb bob, and go down to third access and get yourself really close, and then you can head out and go verify. We always verify third access. It's pretty nuanced. It's always a teeny tiny adjustment. We get a lot of questions about it. We're firm believers in it, especially out west, especially at Total Archery Challenge. You gotta have beeswax. This is what you're gonna put on all your serving, uh, we put it on D loops, everything. So beeswax for life, get yourself some of that. Obviously some serving. And this is what I do my soft knots with. This is a serving material. And there's different sizes in there. So I just bought a variety pack. This is 0.46 millimeter. I probably use that the most for soft knots. I got a level here because sometimes you gotta put a level on your riser and just check everything that you can verify there. Extra D loop material. I got a shot trainer for practicing shooting. We sell those a lot on the website. People are definitely taking advantage of those. Also, we have like arrow building areas. So we got the Arizona Easies. These are the minis, the mini max left. That's long enough to fit like a max stealth. And then the minis, mini and mini max. I, I need to tell people the difference there because you might buy the wrong one. I know that a lot of people have. This will do like blazers or AEE hybrid HPs and little teeny tiny veins, but it would not do max stealths or max hunters. This would. So get the mini max, not the mini, to give yourself more options. Again, I have left, right, left. You can do arrows pretty fast. So if you don't mind aggressive helical, this is the way to go. Veins, extra knocks. Love the IP5 for four or for five millimeter arrows. AEE max bond glue, a last chance grain scale with the little arrow holder so you can put it on there. A Pine Ridge arrow spinner. Look at that stash. Oh, don't be looking at my arrow <laughs> stash because it's actually low, right? Now. Get yourself an arrow spinner. This will help you make sure your arrows are cut true. Like in this instance, Vector, they're, they're not letting you cut your, their arrows. They're gonna cut them, glue them, orient the veins, do everything based on your setup online. Whereas if you just buy blanks, you're gonna do the cutting. So arrow saws. I don't have a great arrow saw. I'm in the market for one. Comment below, tell me which arrow saw I should be looking at. Like the last chance one, I don't wanna spend five, six hundred dollars on an arrow saw. I got an old Cabela's one that does an okay job. I just have to really pay attention to spinning it. Uh, the apple saws, I don't think they make any more. Who makes a good arrow saw for at home? I'm ready to invest. Help me invest as well. Let me go over here and just talk about a couple doodads. This little kit is really handy. I'll keep like a peep, extra servings, fill points, allens. You gotta have fire. This, somebody asked in a video before, this is a, takes veins off from boning. Works pretty good. I've had to touch up the edge a few times, but it works great for 
taking veins off. Anything else cool in here? Oh, bunch of punch tags. That's pretty cool. Did you guys know this is a hunting channel as well? We hunt. That's kind of my setup over here. You see, I just got extra releases and sights and stabilizers from AEE and all sorts of cool stuff, but at the end of the day, you gotta learn the craft. You gotta learn how does your bow work. Why are there cable guards pulling the cables out of the way so the arrow can get shot? How do you time a bow? How do you orient the cams? Um, one thing I don't have that I should probably mention is a laser. That's one thing that Josh taught me is he's always getting a laser on the end of a cam and checking to make sure the orientation is true. And without a laser finder, and I think he sells those on his website, and I think they're made by Spot Hog. So check those out. We'll put that in the video description as well. Guys, don't be afraid to work on your own stuff. It doesn't mean you still don't go to your trusted pro shop for certain things, and, and I support pro shops. Don't get it twisted, pro shop owners. I got nothing but love for you. But guys, if you live 50, 100 miles away from a, a decent bow shop, there's just some things you need to do on your own, like maybe changing out strings or swapping out peep. You need to press for. Invest in yourself. Don't do it overnight. Do it over the years, and you'll slowly build up an arsenal like this. If you guys have a YouTube channel, make a video about your shop. Tag us. We want to see what you're working with. We encourage you all to join us and be in this strong community. And speaking of our community, we need your subscription. Tap it. It's painless, and we appreciate it. Catch you on the next one.